Yes, folks. Last night I sat down and had a chat with the uh, so-called bad boy, John Ansell. Now, while his voice came across very clearly, mine didn't for some reason. But anyway, you'll get the idea. Yeah, hi John, how are you? Good Terry, how are you? Not too stormy up your way? Well it was, it really, it really was. was. Yeah. It's a lot better now, a lot, yeah. much better now. Yeah, anyway John, um, before we uh, get started today, uh, can you give my audience a brief overview of your, of your background? Uh, well, I, I'm a, I, I move words around for a living. Um, I do that in political advertising, did three campaigns for Labour in 87, 90 and 93, that's not widely known, um, but they were, you know, they were quite well received in the radio area, won awards and things, and an election as well, it's always good to do that. Um, a shame about the 93 one when Labour were fighting themselves, but uh, uh, then I popped up again in 2005 uh, when Don Brash uh, put his hand up for National and uh, did some uh, reasonably conspicuous stuff there on uh, my only ever billboard campaign to that point in my career. It seemed to go all right, except the one that, of course, people talk about only, the media, they quite liked them at the time, but now they, they revile uh, one in particular, the Iwi Kiwi one. Beaches, beaches at the top, Iwi. Labour stands for Iwi, National stands for Kiwi, which they willfully misrepresent as meaning Kiwi uh, stands for white people, which is very dishonest of them. Of course, it stands for all of them, all people, all New Zealanders, including Iwi. So it's it's almost as though I've only ever done that in my whole life. Um, I had a couple of uh, less enjoyable stints with ACT. It's like herding cats with them, um, <laughs> getting them to do central planning uh, as, as in an ad campaign. So, and, and I write poems in, in my local newspaper and I uh, make professional speeches about the crazy English language. That's what I'd really rather be doing. Um, but I seem to find myself in this political area and particularly uh, but one other thing I did last year was, I think, take down the mayor of Wellington because he rather thought it would be a, a good idea to demote my language, which I'm rather fond of, in the city's libraries and uh, at the tip and all that, and put the language spoken by 4% of New Zealanders uh, in great big letters above the language spoken by 100%. And that just doesn't go down well with a writer. And I didn't have a client. I didn't have any money and I didn't have so I couldn't do any ads but uh, I used bait. You bait the communist by asking it uh, a reasonable question uh, and that's the kind that communists least like to answer and you broadcast the hissy fit live on Facebook and that seemed to work quite well. He lost when he wasn't supposed to by 66. I had 11 and a half thousand uh, live stream views, which might have had something to do with it. I hope so. So that's probably me in a nutcase, a nutshell. Hmm. I think nutcase is probably more apt. What do you want me to talk about now? Um, well, whatever you want, really. You, you just go for it. Go <laughs> yeah, for it. I have actually prepared a meticulously uh, detailed uh, slideshow, which I'll just pretend it's all very spontaneous. That's what, uh, why this isn't happening sooner. So I'll just go into, it's, it's sort of my resume of the political situation at the moment. Uh, you, you were interested that I comment on a particular person? Uh, yeah, Billy T. Billy T. Yeah, Billy T. T. Uh, T. And uh, he interests me as well. I thought I would do a comparison with the other uh, Christian Maori, or part Maori, Part Samoan, I think as well, Elliot Ikele. Uh, but I think the I'll, I'll start the I'll start the uh, my little screen uh, show um, with uh, that's already um, in the wrong place. Where is that? Sorry, it's just not. Uh, there it is. Ah, oh, yes. Well, there's there's Judith. Yeah, there is. I was going to I was going to start uh, above that. There you go. Who would you prefer as prime minister? Now, this is extraordinary because this is not the news media 
uh, rigging uh, rigging uh, an election poll, uh, and they've got things rather the other way around. This is News Hub doing what the uh, lovely communist media do and accidentally um, virtue signaling on behalf of the right, because they asked the readers who they would prefer. And this is what the readers said on day one of Judith's reign. <laughs> so it's, it's not looking too good for the ones um, who gave 50 million bucks to the, to the media to rather do the opposite, I would have thought. Yeah. But uh, anyway, so, so on, on the back of that, you know, I'm thinking, well, she's uh, an electable commodity as long, and she looks pretty good there, mm. as long as she channels her inner crusher or Thatcher. I mean, they're both conviction politicians, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I think that's, uh, that's something she should, she should definitely not go soft. She's been soft on certain issues before, well, that's not going to work. She's not in there to go soft. She's in there to, to um, do the hard things, say the hard things. And I think at this particular time in history, the public will go for that. So, um, John, yeah, you remember, I'll... Say, John, can I just say something about that for a moment? Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of like um, Simon O'Connor, but but uh, he's yes. conservative for, uh, for these guys. But so yeah. Crush is probably, the, it, she is the best bet at the moment, I would say. Yeah, I was pushing Simon O'Connor. I, th I, I liked one particular speech of his. I thought it was yeah, a wonderful, wonderful speech. Yeah. Wonderful speech. But, but uh, if Crusher can be Crusher mm -hmm. um, and Crusher, then that'll be good. Remember Thatcher's uh, um, U-turn speech? You turn if you want to. The lady's not for turning. And that's sort of Judith's yeah. like, I'd like Judith to do this. This is not a party political broadcast. This has not been authorised. It's probably deplored. It's actually the wish of a conviction copywriter, which is what I am, really. Um, I would like her to say, the National Party was founded to oppose communism. I plan to honour that pledge. And uh, I think that would be a, a, a wonderful start to a campaign. I've no idea, in fact, I have got an idea that they probably wouldn't do that, but that's what they should do, because uh, communism needs to be called what it is. That's what Ardern is, mm -hmm. and there's nobody better to call her to account than, than Judith. But... Um, Will she do it though? That's we'll see. Well, will she do? Will she do? I've got a whole campaign if she wants one. Uh, pointing, I, I don't think Ardern would last a week with what I've got in mind. But um, anyway, that's that's my thoughts on on, on Judith. Now, um, the other two guys. I'm sorry that uh, the new Conservative logo has been obscured, at least on my screen, by us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's the New Zealand Public Party, the two white cane interlocking white canes there, which. Um, which I find amusing, but... Um, can I stop you there? Can I, can I, I want to ask you, what do you actually think yeah. about the, the name New Zealand Public Party? You know, for me, when I hear the word public, I, I hear the well, word people, the People's Republic of China. To me, it gets about yeah. a, sort of a communist feel about it. I don't know. I don't like it. I don't like the name at all. Um, well, I find it a, a bit average. I, I've, I've been trying to talk people into free New Zealand for a long time. They all seem to ignore me, but I think that would go really well. But... Um, yeah, I mean it's 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 not the it's not the least of their worries, I don't think. So I thought I'd um, uh, have a little bit of a joke here because um, there's Billy and there's Elliot. Billy Elliot is a movie. I don't know if you've caught up with that, Terry, but yeah, it's a I've famous it, movie. Yeah. So we've got Billy and we've got Elliot, um, and they're both essentially pushing the same stuff or talking to the same people. Mm -hmm. And uh, Billy would appear to have this enormous uh, following. Um, There's a lot of wishful thinking involved, I think, and a lot of uh, very clever marketing. Mm -hmm. I mean, Billy is, uh, I think Billy is a good man. He's a sincere man. You know, uh, I know that um, we, we, you know, a lot of people want to bag him at every opportunity. I think he's a good man, a sincere man, an excellent guitarist, obviously, a good family man, um, a Seventh-day Adventist, you know, he, he loves his God. Mm -hmm. But I think there's, uh, I think there are some issues, and I just want to go through that, and then we'll come back to this comparison later. Mm -hmm. Now, this was the first piece of marketing I saw of the New Zealand Public Party, this sort of um, pyramid structure. I don't know that pyramids have pillars, Billy, but um, anyway, his main political pillars, I thought I'd go through them. And I've got some concerns about them. 
Uh, so the first one being democracy. What definition are we using? The, the Western one or the leftist one? Uh, and there are two definitions of democracy. Well, there's hundreds actually, but uh, the Western one says all citizens are equal, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. The leftist definition, and indeed the tribalist definition, who are leftists usually, says that some citizens are more equal than others. And this bothers me if that's what he means. Um, we've already got a poll there as the, as the heading. Um, the Treaty of Waitangi is uh, quite high in the order of priorities. Uh, what version are we talking about? I rather think it's probably the Treaty of Wellington 1989, not the Treaty of Waitangi 1840. Treaty of Wellington 1989 is a concoction of Geoffrey Palmer's, another communist, um, who somehow intuited that the Treaty of Waitangi was a partnership. Well, it might be, and there are two ways that it might be, and that is if it's written in invisible ink or it's written on the back. But it's certainly not a partnership in any sense of the word uh, using the Treaty of Waitangi. That would be the Treaty of Wellington. So I'm concerned that that might be what Billy uh, is referring to. Public health. Would it be the public health that now sees the district health boards uh, prioritise the treatment of Maori over the treatment of non-Maori? That's a non-starter for me, and I think about 70% of the population. That's absolutely disgraceful, isn't it? That no. comes down to killing people because they're not Maori. Now, that, absolutely. that is, dis is disgraceful. Does Billy mean that? I don't know if he's given it any thought. See, I think Billy was raised Maori and... Um, uh, probably has has grown up with this highly biased view of the world that they that they have and their instructors have given them. Mm -hmm. The other thing is environmental sovereignty. He may not have meant this particular angle on it, but me being you know obsessed with this subject as I apparently am, uh, because I'd rather not lose my country and it's being surrendered uh, a little more every week. Do they mean the sovereignty by which Aucklanders now have to go cup in hand to the Tanifa? to bribe the Tanifa of the Waikato River for their drinking water. Apparently the Tanifa no longer uh, regards uh, water as sacred uh, on the payment of certain koha. I think the Tanifa has, uh, has, has given up its, um, its, uh, its holy view about water because it's been paid off. What else have we got? Economic and fiscal expertise. Now, Billy has, is having his uh, economic policy written by a top Maori businessman in Australia. Mm. Well, I mean, I'm not suggesting that a top Maori businessman in Australia can't be the ultimate expert on economics, but it just once again, it just once again goes to that that sort of agenda of Billy's. He just everything everything is Maori. Now, there's another 85% of people. Uh, among whom there might be some very good economic and fiscal specialists, you never know. And will this one tailor things to the 15%? I rather suspect so. Protection of national independence. Which nation? Is it the nation of New Zealand or the nation of Aotearoa that he goes on about? Now, I'd like to, I, I, while I was looking at triangles, I... I, I, I thought, well, I'll have it. I, I just thought of this particular triangle. Um, it's a little triangle I devised. Uh, that is, in fact, the direct descendants of a ninth generation New Zealander. Now, this is relevant. Why? Um, these are the numbers of ancestors that we've got if we go back to around about 1840, we find uh, that the black ones are, are non Maori, the red ones are. Maori. So you see that a child born today, a baby, has two parents, uh, roughly born, say they're born, say the generations are 25 years. So parents born in 1985, uh, four grandparents. These are the ones that could conceivably all be born in New Zealand. Uh, there won't be one person that has that, that, has that, um, that set. But it makes you think, it makes you realise when I go through it. Uh, and the Maori 
person, so-called Māori, can have only one grandparent born in New Zealand and, and so on down. 1945, eight great-grandparents um, uh, the little baby has, born in New Zealand, uh, 16 great-great-grandparents, 32 great-great-great-grandparents, 64 great-great-great-great-grandparents, if they were all here by 1870, uh, 128 great-great-great-great-great-great, one, two, three, four, five, four, oh, I'm losing count, it's five, isn't it? If they were, if they were, see, I had a great, 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 something grandmother who was born in 1844. Her parents arrived with this lot. Now, very few families would have 256 uh, people who arrived in New Zealand in 1840. I'm not suggesting that. And I'm not suggesting that Māori would say, but, but we could conceivably have a maximum of 254 direct ancestors. You get my drift? Yeah, yeah. People with 254 direct ancestors going back, born or arriving in New Zealand, um, actually born in New Zealand, because it goes to the second lowest tier there. It's 500 and something if it's the ones who arrived in, like my great, 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 arrived in 1842 from Ireland, so they weren't born here. Um, so a, a baby with 254 uh, New Zealand born ancestors uh, could be uh, told to give money to a people with a minimum of eight. Now they've probably got a lot more, yeah, 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 yeah. but you could have only eight. To be called Maori, you could have only eight um, in the most extreme example, I think I'm right, uh, ancestors to have been born in New Zealand since 1840. And of course, the person who is, is, is the bottom most one of those will have their own enormous triangle of people who are exclusively Maori going back to 1250. But it does make you realize how many, um, how flimsy the, the Maoriness is in people like, like Steve O'Regan, he's 116th, his daughter Hannah is 132nd, you know, in other words, 31's 32nd's Irish or something. Mm -hmm. So it's a, I, I think it's, um, it's, it's a disgrace how these people are. And of course, they vilify the likes of me by saying, oh, you're talking about blood quantum. That somehow puts me alongside Hitler and a eugenicist or something. But you know, I just thought it would be good to show that. But, but to one show of the, how, how one many. One of the questions I, yeah, good. But one of the questions I ask there is why, why, um, why do Maori, even with a, a very small uh, uh, portion of Maori blood, follow mm. follow follow Maori as opposed to following. Well, uh, for the money, for the money. I, I mean, if somebody said that the English were about to compensate the Irish mm -hmm. for the potato farm, I think you'd find that I'd be as Irish as I'll get out. I'd have me tam o' shanter on, and I'd be uh, I'd be singing, uh, dancing with my leg behind me back, and all that. You know, it's incentives. Oh, okay. They could do this. I could do. Uh, I reckon. Well, I'm sure it's deeply felt actually as well. They prefer the Maori hmm. culture, lifestyle, raised with it. Nothing wrong with that. Hmm. But um, it's just a matter of the money. It's 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 fraudulent, hmm. and um, we shouldn't be bra being brainwashed, and we shouldn't be forced to surrender to them. Now I've got to get on a bit now. Um, we have an issue with sovereignty. Yes. Which sovereign? Which sovereign is Mr. Taker Hika following? Mm. Um, in 2014, the Maori King uh, was written up in the Guardian as, as uh, refusing to meet the British royals. I don't know if I'm too amused about that, says the Queen. But uh, you know, um, this is a guy who said in 2016, 2016, two years later, he's calling for a share of sovereignty by 2025, a formal role for Maori in the country's leadership. Uh, didn't spell out what he meant by sovereignty, but it seemed to imply a role for Maori tribes of iwi. Oh, really? Oh, really? 2017, now we're getting relevant, aren't you? Wondered would I get relevant. 2017, we've got Billy uh, talking to the Chinese, schmoozing the Chinese on behalf of the king. I'm very proud to be His Majesty King Tuhaitia's trade ambassador. Um, that role is a very, 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 very serious role. I'll build up a collection of trade, uh, a few other words, trade agreements uh, that support the very pillars that we've been talking about today 
in the one belt, one road concept. Mm. And I believe that the one belt, one road concept is perhaps another conduit to flowing through the opportunities for our people. And he makes a lot of references to the Maori economy, uh, economic sovereignty and all that. Mm. Um, Ilya Dikile, by comparison, had this to say about the Belt and Road. This latest separation is also a reminder that New Zealand was the first Western nation to sign up to the potentially dangerous Belt and Road Initiative. So there's a, there's a contrast, isn't there, between the two... Mm. to uh, Christian um, brown men regarding the Chinese Belt and Road. Uh, Billy again, Agenda, twin, Agenda 30, which he, which he rightly rails against. He, he, he says a lot of stuff that's, that's correct. Mm -hmm. There's a complete challenge, but here we go, to the Treaty of Waitangi, to Maori as tangata whenua with inherent, inherent cultural practices and cultural rights to exercise those cultural practices, says Billy TK, Junior, Nati. Pahowera, Nati Manawi. So everything's, you know, tribal. Yep, yep. Um, we need to question it because it's likely yep. going to violate the few things we take for granted as Maori. So he's always talking about being for everybody. and gets very snaky if, uh, if, if anyone says he's not. But, you know, there, there are the words. I don't want to be criticising the man. 2017, one of the first councils in Aotearoa, New Zealand, to sign up for this program was Hamilton. So Aotearoa, it's always Aotearoa, New Zealand. Not the um, yeah. Well, this is what uh, the public had to say. Peter Williams said, uh, being a true media man, said on Tuesday, the move to be renamed Aotearoa was unstoppable. And that's the typical media uh, getting it wrong. The public had a different idea. Um, 68% no bloody way. We want to stay, keep our name and it's, it's pretty much, um, well, what is it, treason? What is it when uh, you deface a country's name as these communists have been doing for years with no public mandate whatsoever? Yeah, yeah. So News Hub has given us one. Thanks, News Hub. Um, so I see with Billy a red flag, a series of red flags, and it's, it's that flag. Uh, and, but really it's that flag. Yes. Of, my own, of my own devising. Uh, that's really what it's all about. You, they're just responding to incentives, man. They just, they, they're just they just responding to incentives like anybody else. Mm -hmm. I don't blame the Maori uh, no. leaders. I blame the weak, feeble uh, Pākehā, you know, non-Maori, uh, who are just too scared of being criticised. Mm. It's not nice, I can tell you, but uh, too scared of being criticised or being bullied. Um, Identity politics. Back to that says behind uh, those lovely pictures of us, it actually says, Whose Majesty? Um, does Billy? Uh, Billy is reputed to not have a very high opinion of the Queen, which Elia Dicolet does. So there's another, there's another difference. Elia Dicolet has a, a much more um, um, common sense view of the Treaty of Waitangi. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. Uh, is not being, and he also talks about the Koemarama Conference, which I've never heard a Maori do, but the Koemarama Conference was when, uh, was when all those chiefs, 200 of them from all around the country, were effusive in their praise for the Queen's sovereignty. They said it over and over again, you can see it online, um, for British law and for Christianity. You know, I'm not a Christian, but I acknowledge that Christianity did, did, did New Zealand a power of good in the early years with Maori. What's next? So here we are, the two guys, Billy Elliot. <laughs> Elliot says, we would get rid of the Maori seats. We would get rid of anything that changes Maori to something special and high up. Mm -hmm. um, yes, yeah, sorry, Elliot, you're not quite consistent there because I did try to get you involved in the campaign in Wellington and you wouldn't touch it with a barge pole where signs like this were going up all around the town and, uh, and Elliot thought it was just a local thing and uh, he loved his Maori language and I didn't ask him not to, but I was, it was a matter of fairness. It is not fair to demote a language spoken by 100% of New Zealanders below a language spoken by 4%. But he didn't think that was a thing. In that place there, of course, they were, they were trying it on. Justin Lester, being a communist, was trying on the, the eradication of the English language. A woman there took an issue with me taking pictures and um, she got quite snaky. She was, she was Maori and she let me know that in due course, in the fullness of time, I won't be allowed to operate, really, 
I said, I don't have to take into account your feelings any more than you are taking into account of mine. She said, you will soon. And that is the aggressive attitude that, uh, that Māori have these days at the highest level. So we gave Lester the, showed Lester the way out. Um, so Elliot said that. So I've, I've given Elliot a telling off there, but uh, that's the only thing I really disagree with him on. Billy says, very revealingly, my dad is Māori, so naturally I lean towards that side. Mm -hmm. Huh? Really? Because that's where I live, in New Zealand. I don't live in France. I don't live in Ireland. So, you know, once again, it's, it's, it's Māori all the way, the 15%. I, I really don't it's know. just I, the way he's raised. I really don't understand. That's the way he's raised. It's just strange. Well, that's the way he's raised. People, and this is, he gets very nasty when you challenge him and calls you an idiot and things. People yeah. who call me a Maori separatist, they're liars. It's not true in any way. I'm for the people. Yes, but which people? Whose people? Again, I reiterate, he's, I think he's a nice and genuine God-fearing man. I just think he's blinkered. And that's, uh, that's not going to be good when we're, when we're having our country surrendered by the other lot, uh, as we speak. Uh, in fact, national as well. So whether the slogan up there, reclaim New Zealand for all the people is accurate, uh, I, I, I doubt it. And I'll just end with that. That's, that's my summation of the whole political spectrum. Thank Two you. teenage girls, the left versus the West. They want you to panic. They want you to think, says Naomi Zeit. And I, I think, I, I can't think of a better way to uh, end my little summation. How's that, Terry? That's good, good. That, hey, now I flick back to you, don't I? I flick back to you. You told me I've got to get back to the, uh, the, the split screen. To the, uh, the split screen. I go stop share. Sorry, folks. That, there we are. Now, can yeah. I just, uh, you know, um, do, did you see that thing on uh, what Billy said on uh, uh, Vinnie Eastwood the other day? Did you see that? Yeah. About me? He called me an idiot? He called, called you an idiot. I, I, I did. I, I, I quoted him there. I didn't say it was to you. I thought I'd let you do that. Anyway, but, uh, I, did uh, see, I did see I'll, you pop up. I'll read out what he said. This is the, now, this is what I said to What Billy. did you say? What did you say? Yes. Okay. I'll read this out to you. Um, Billy, would you be prepared to sign a document stating that you would not treat Maori and Pākehā differently? And he called me an idiot. Yes. <laughs> so, in other yeah, words, he's terrible. Too, so in other words, he's too gutless to sign off on his own statements about equality. He's a liar. Well, <laughs> well, well if you... it's not the question he wanted to be asked. He, he's, he's, he's saying, he's using examples of what he's being accused of. Like, I'm being accused of being a communist. I'm being accused of working for the UN. And, and he can back that. But he, he never says I'm being... Well, he asked, perhaps he is starting to say. I don't know if he's ever said that I'm being accused of being an agent for the Maori king, because that's what I think he may well be. Could be. Or, you know, Maori King, meaning Maori Inc. Mm -hmm. uh, he talks about Sir Mark Solomon. He talks about Matua, uh, Matua Tuku Morgan. Um, now, these guys are uh, uh, not the most savoury character. Well, I don't know about Solomon. He's probably a good businessman. But, you know, these are not the people that New Zealanders, 70% of New Zealanders anyway, want to be running their country. What these people forget is that they're 70, they're 30%. What the media forget is that they're 30%. The communists, which I, is the name I give to all leftists, because that's what they want to be, really, uh, and because they don't like it, and because they're wolves in sheep's clothing, um, uh, they, they're only 30%. The noisy, violent minority are 30%. Uh, the rest of us are 70%. We just don't realise that we are. Yeah. Uh, and you know what, what really, really worries me, um, John, is this. Is, um, are we replacing, if we go for Billy, are we actually replacing communism with Maori control? Well, I think that's what they don't want us to talk about. They, they, the, the Maori guys, in you know, because the public party is, is disproportionately Maori and... Um, uh, female, I think, uh, and they 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 say, "Oh, we've got to be New Zealanders together." But ah, uh, yeah, but uh, no, they don't want to be New Zealanders. I don't think they want to be uh, Aotearoans. Uh, public of New Zealand have the real public of New Zealand have given the message on that that New Sub Poll is 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 very consistent with all the other polls on. Uh, on race-based seats, about 33 different polls that I can remember. 
uh, binding referenda. The public don't want a bar of that. And if that party is going to give us that, then that party needs to, its supporters and potential voters need to be told that, need to realise that. Uh, but the new Conservatives, uh, well, Elliot's not, not pure in that, but I, I, I look at Elliot, I see a good man, I see a, um, I see a very sincere man with no guile whatsoever. With Billy, I see a good man, but a very cunning businessman, a very cunning manipulator. Suddenly they're turning up on, um, in a poll online as the most preferred party by thousands because they've rallied their troops. They've got very, very loyal uh, supporters. But, yeah, but uh, how, how, how many? But how because they're church people. They're church people. I mean, they can the, the, the Tamakis, they can all they can drum up hundreds, thousands, um, just with the church connection. The meeting in Christchurch was about fifty percent Seventh Day Adventists. I was told. Uh, so uh, it's not a surprise when a when a Messiah comes along uh, with a following, but uh, it's it doesn't translate to uh, necessarily getting over five percent when it's never happened before. Billy may be the first to do it, but, but he's, he's doing it by manipulation and not being, not being uh, totally frank and getting a bit uh, shirty with people like you for asking quite legitimate questions. I'll be, I won't be a uh, flavor of the month either, will I? This hitman might be, uh, I, might have to, I might have two hitmen heading for me. <laughs> Billy's hitman and, 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 and Billy, <laughs> I don't know. But I just want, I don't want to lose my country. So I'm, I say these things and I, I, I'm not racist. Uh, I, in the sense that what is racist? Racist is someone who believes that anyone by virtue of their race must be inferior to, to oneself. Mm. Well, that's, that's nuts. But that's what they do, these tricksters. And that's what the left does. And Billy is not of the left, but uh, he shouldn't do that either because that's, that reflects poorly on him. He should answer that question, mm -hmm. and uh, and he has confessed accidentally that he leans towards his father's side. Why your father's side, particularly? I don't know. Hey, what, why not your mother's? Side? What would you? He probably got a lot more non-Maori ancestors than Maori ones, but uh, you know. But for you, for you personally, though, what would it take? What would Billy have to do um, to make you uh, vote for him? Uh, well, he'd have to he'd have to honour your he'd have to answer your question basically, did not he? Yes. But I mean, he's he already has. He won't be able to resist the temptation. He can't resist the temptation to to cuddle up to communist China. He's got indigenous businesses all around the world. Nothing wrong with that. But I'm I'm asking what is his priority? What are his priorities? Yes. Maybe God comes number one. I wouldn't like to suggest that you know. A, uh, a man of God would put God any lower than one. So God's one, but I think the Maori king might be second or the Maori nation or Aotearoa, indigenous peoples of the world with whom he has huge contact um, might, be, might, be, uh, might be next. And, uh, well, that might be wrong. But I don't know where New Zealand, I think New Zealand, New Zealand, like all of us, is ranking somewhere fourth or fifth. Mm -hmm. in his uh, estimation. Wait, he, he would wait. never say so, but I he doesn't like the Queen. He loves the Maori King. He doesn't like the English Queen, I'm told, from someone who's met him. Uh, so I think that's a concern. I don't, um, you know, I'll get hammered for this. But uh, I'm but just being me, a patriotic I, New Zealand. For me, I, I'd, I'd, I'd be quite happy if he was to actually to make a, sign a contract, sign a contract with New Zealand that he would actually... Um, you know, abide by the statements he's making, you know, Some, something like that. For well, me, democracy, if he thought... really does, yeah, if he really does believe in democracy by the usual yeah. system, and he's talking about, uh, you know, citizen or, or some form of referenda. Yeah, yeah. Well, if he will abide by the will of the people, hmm. but if he would do that, he wouldn't be talking about Aotearoa every five minutes because he already knows what the will of the people is on that one. Yeah, yeah that's wouldn't true. Wouldn't go on in Maori for three minutes at the start of his meetings when he knows that, 96% of people can't speak it. It's just that sort of arrogance that they have, these guys. And they just think it's normal because they've been brought up with it in the school. Everyone defers to them. But uh, I think it's a problem. I don't think it's a minor thing, this surrender to Maori. I, I was the one that came up with, uh, fed up with the Maorification of everything for an act ad, which didn't run. But it's been happening at, at pace since. Uh, that's exactly what's happening. 
the marification of everything. So we either pretend it's not happening for the sake of a quiet life or certain idiots like me and you get up and say so. But when it's put to the test, ask Justin Lester, or Comrade Lester, as I call him, ask him whether people um, agree with his Te Reo Māori Wellington policy now. Yeah, yeah, for me, like for me, you stand up for your culture, don't you? You stand up. For, why are we not allowed to stand up for ours? We only did just about everything, you know, and created just not me personally, but uh, people that look a bit like you and a bit like me uh, created just about everything since the dawn yeah. of time that people are now using yeah. Yeah, all really, around the world. And, you know, it's uh, it really is strange. Get some respect. We, um, we, we've, we're supposed to be ashamed of our culture. But yeah, everybody yeah. else should be proud. And then, then that's, this is yeah. what's going wrong in this country. That's what's going wrong with the world. And yeah, it's, absolutely. It's, you know, the pendulum is swinging, but, um, well, swinging, we might be swinging soon because the other side are very violent. Mm. Uh, the communist and the tribalist side we've here. Seen it, we've seen um, it absolutely violent. Black lives, black yeah. lives matter. You know, everybody coming out for a guy that held a gun to the belly of a pregnant woman as though he's mm. some sort of martyr. Well, what, what was done to him was bad, but that's been handled by guess whose justice system? <laughs> um, you know, the justice system devised by, um, you know. Yeah. How, how are we people, going for time? How are we going for time? Well, we're, we're doing pretty badly, actually. We've, okay. we've, we've, because uh, my, my stopwatch went black and I couldn't see it, and I think we we're way over, so we've probably okay. wound it up. Why don't you stop it here, I think, eh? How's yeah, it? that'll do. I no. think I'm in enough trouble. You're in enough trouble, so. <laughs> We'll stop oh, digging, I think that's, eh? that's gone. That's, this has gone fine. No, I'm really quite pleased with this. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So anyway, John, thank you very much yeah. for coming on. Um, I think Thanks, a lot of people have learned a lot of stuff tonight.